Finding the greatest term in a binomial expansion, rather than, for instance, just identifying a particular term and getting its coefficient. That part's easy enough. If, for instance, I wanted to know what's the coefficient of the term in x to the 7, well, that'd be easy enough. The term in x to the 7 would simply be 11, 7, 1 to the balance of it, 4, x to the 7. Going through the binomial coefficients, and the second one, rising from power 0 up to power 11, and the first one dropping from power 11 down to power 0. It's easy enough to identify a particular term. <clears throat> but what if it was that you had to find the greatest term without writing them all out? Well, it's still easy in this case, because there are no other numbers apart from the binomial coefficients. And you know from Pascal's triangle, for instance, binomial coefficients simply rise up to the top and then fall back down again, either having a single one at the top, if there's an odd number of terms, or an equal pair in the middle, if there's an even number of terms. And here there would be an even number of terms. The first term would be u0, and then that would carry on to finally you would have u11. There'd be 12 terms here. So in this case, there'd be two equal terms, and the coefficients would be as defined, because that would just be 11, um, 5, and 11, 6 of x to the 5, x to the 6, they'd both be the same. And of course they're both the same, because choosing 5 things from 11 is the same as not choosing the other 6 from 11. That part's easy enough. But what would happen if instead of just having 1s, it was something like this, 2 plus 3x to the power 11? Now the coefficients have been altered. Instead of it just being the binomial coefficients, the 11 CRs that rise up and then fall down, they're going to be weighted by these. There'll be a 2 to the power 11 that will drop to 2 to the 10. There'll be a 3 to the 0 that will gradually rise through the powers of 3. They're going to skew the results. How would you find the greatest term in that case without obviously just writing all 12 of them out? Well, we'll do this. Identify the terms. So terms will look like this. The general term would be 11r, the first one, and then the second one is 3x. That would be to the power r, and that would be to the balance, because there has to be 11 altogether amongst the powers. So that means that term is going to be 11r, 2 to the 11 minus r, times 3 to the r of x to the r. Now, since it's only the coefficient, there's no value for x yet, since it's just the coefficient I want, I think I'll just call that then use... I'll just make up this notation just now. The coefficient of u to the r is going to be just the numerical part of that. 11r, 2 to the 11 minus r, times 3 to the r. That means the coefficient of the following term would simply be, just replace the r's by r plus 1, r plus 1, 2 to the 11 minus r plus 1, so that's minus r minus 1, times 3 to the r plus 1. And again, these terms, even though they've been skewed, they're still going to rise and fall. It's still going to be a smooth function. They're still going to rise and fall, which means actually with the terms u1, u2, u3, sorry, u2, u3, and so on, whilst they're rising, that term will be smaller. Once they've reached the top one, if, for instance, this was the top one here, that means that at this point, u2 is going to start to be, you know it was less than u1, u1 was less than u2, but if that's the top one, u2 is then going to be greater than that one, and of course greater than the following one. So the condition for the greatest term would be this. You'll find the greatest term once you've found ur greater than ur plus 1. I'm not wanting the x to the r's, I just want the coefficients. So I'll put that wee bit down. The coefficient of that has to be greater than the coefficient of that. Well, put these parts in then. So the coefficient of ur is this part of it, just the numerical part. 11r, what does that mean? That means 11 factorial over r factorial times 11 minus r factorial times 2 to the 11 minus r, oops, a daisy, times 3 to the r. And that's to be greater than or equal to, could be equal to, because sometimes two terms in the middle might be the same before they start falling again. This one here, <coughs> 11 factorial over r plus 1 factorial times the balance, 11 minus r plus 1, so that's 11 minus r minus 1 factorial, times 2 to the 11 minus r minus 1, times 3 to the r plus 1. And you to solve that in equation for r. Well, 
everything's positive, so it's fine to start multiplying and dividing both sides by the same amount. So that divide both sides by 11 factorial. Be multiplying this case. Now out of these two, r plus 1 factorial means r plus 1 times r times r minus 1. In other words, r plus 1 times r factorial. So dividing those parts out, that part there would divide out the factorial part of that, just leaving the very first part, r plus 1. Similarly for this one, 11 minus r, that's higher than that, that's the step below, plus all the following ones. So that term could cancel out the factorial, just leaving the first term in that factorial. The powers, 3 to the r plus 1 has got one more 3, divide out all those 3's from both sides, there'll just be one 3 left there, same here. That's got one less 2 than this. I multiply by another 2, I'll take away that negative 1 you'll end up with this. So that lot would cancel out all of them, just leaving a 2. Then what have you got? Just tidy up what's left. I've got a 2 over 11 minus r is greater than or equal to a 3 over r plus 1. So I've got 2r plus 2 is greater than or equal to 33 minus 3r. Swap the sides. 5r is greater than 31. So r's got to be greater than or equal to 31 upon 5. And 31 upon 5 is 6 and a fifth. That means that r should equal 7. So since that was great, that wasn't an equal amount. If it had been something like r equals 6, that means the 6th term and the 7th term would have been the same. The equality would have applied there because r is 6 would equal r is 6 plus 1. r is 7, but it had to be greater than it. So r equals 7 is greater than r equals 7. And then the value of that term would be this. So that the greatest term would be, just putting those numbers back in, just put it back into here, I've got 11, 7, 2 to the 11 minus 7, which is 4, times 3 to the 7 of x to the 7. And then it's just the case of potential calculator. You could do 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, because 11, 7 is the same as 11, 4, but I'll just type all in here. Comes out as 1154736 x to the power 7. For the greatest term in this expansion. Taking it a step further, what would happen when the actual variable itself had some value to substitute in, meaning that all the terms were just numbers then. What's the greatest term in this case? Well, it's exactly the same. Just put that number in. So what you've got in this case would be, that's the same as 3 plus 2 halves or 1 to the power 16. I know the answer to that is 4 to the power 16, but that simply means that the sum of all 17 terms is going to be 4 to the power 17. Eh, no, so the separate terms would be this. So the individual term would look like this. 16r, 3 times 1 to the r, and that'll be 16 minus r. Remember the terms would be numbered u1 plus, sorry, u0 plus u1 plus u2, all the way up to u16. There's actually 17 terms there. But which of these is the greatest? Well, if that's ur, that means the following term would be 16r plus 1, 1 to the r plus 1, and then 3 to the 16 minus r plus 1, minus r plus 1, so minus r, minus 1. And this is with these terms. You'll know when you've reached the greatest term, because then it will start to exceed the following ones. Getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger, getting smaller. In other words, you'll reach the greatest term once u to the r is greater than or equal to the following term, because there could be two terms the same before they all start falling again. Right, so it's just a case of putting that down. This has to be greater than that. I'll not write the combination that way, I'll use the factorial form. So 16CR means 16 factorial over R factorial times the balance 16 minus R factorial times 3 to the 16 minus R, and then that's just 1. Good. Forget it. Next part. Following term would be 16 factorial over R plus 1 factorial 
times 16 minus that, so minus r minus 1 factorial, times 3 to the power 16 minus r plus 1, so minus the r minus the 1. And it's the same again, all these terms are positive, which means that I can multiply and divide as I will without affecting this inequality. It'd be different if you had a term with a minus in the middle, because then the terms would alternate positive and negative. And what you would do in that case, you could just find the greatest numerical term, forgetting about the signs. You could just ignore the sign, but it didn't apply here. Because obviously if there were negatives in this, I'd have to be wary about whether I'm multiplying by negative or a positive. So it doesn't apply here. Right, so what can I do? Divide both sides by 16 factorial, so that goes. 3, powers of 3. There's one more 3 here than there. So that means if I divide both sides by this, there'll just be a 3 left in this side. R factorials. R plus 1 factorial is R plus 1 times R and the rest, so times R factorial. So dividing out the R factorial just removes that factorial, leaving the first term. Same with this, that's the greater one, that's 1 less. So that factorial would be 16 minus R times all of those. So that could go along with that part. And that's it virtually done. So what am I left with? I'm left with a 3 over a 16 minus r, which has to be greater than, there's nothing left there apart from a 1, over an r plus 1. Cross multiplying that. 3r plus 3 is greater than or equal to 16 minus r. That's 4r is greater than or equal to 13. So r is greater than or equal to 13 upon 4. And 13 upon 4 is 3 and a quarter, which means that there's no equality here. So there are two terms the same, there is one single greatest term, and that'll be the one where r is reached just after three and a quarter, so it'll be at r equals four. So I know my greatest term, so I'll just put it over here, it's a bit messy. So the greatest term is going to be u4, which is going to be 16, four, 3 to the power 16 minus 4, which is 12, and then just 1 to the power 4, which won't make any difference. So it's just a case of multiplying that lot out. Again, you could do that 16 times 15 times 14 times 13, over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and then 3 to the 12. I'll just do it in one go here. And that's going to give me 9672226220. Not anything like x or x squared or whatever, because x had a numerical value, so that would be the greatest term. Yeah, that's that done.